once again a very warm welcome to all the participants so if you have any questions uh, you can type in and i will broadcast and then we can take forward from there so in today's session we will be looking at what is kerberos what are the important components of kerberos and how we will configure kerberos on a linux machine right so this talk is very much limited to uh, configuration on linux so kerberos can be configured on any linux system whether it's ubuntu centos any of the debian flavors or any other system and it also works on windows so mainly the distribution came out of mit and that was adopted by many other distros for example windows adopted and they customized their own implementation of kerberos which was contributed by mit so we'll be looking at the that kerberos itself so let's start by giving a quick introduction about myself uh, my real name is gurmukh singh uh, properly popularly known by the handle aman singh and i am an author on two books on hadoop and uh, has been working in this industry for more than 14 years mainly into infrastructure implementation and design and i've been into big data for last uh, approximately 5 years now and worked with a lot of companies uh, like yahoo jp morgan chase and many other companies who have been using hadoop at a very large scale and uh, currently i am running a startup uh, by the name of Net netzilon technologies which deals into uh, consultancy and training and you can follow up my github which uh, talks about a lot of recipes for hadoop your configuration or any other uh, concepts you need to get for yourself familiar with or you're looking for any ready-made configurations for setting up anything in Hadoop so you can refer my github so the objectives for today's session would be we will understand what Kerberos is it's working we'll look at quickly uh, briefly at what types of encryptions we can have in KDC and then we will look at how we configure it and a demo let me see if anybody has any question till now so can the participants quickly confirm they can see my screen and can hear me clearly so that uh, we can continue forward okay great great thank you thank you akash pavan phone cover confirming that so what are the challenges why we need first of all kerberos or security so this intent of uh, this today's talk was mainly for as a build up for our Hadoop uh, setup or a build up of Kerberos in Hadoop. So I will be talking mostly from that perspective, but it applies to any of the security implementations even without uh, the use of Hadoop. So mainly uh, Hadoop, when Hadoop was perceived, uh, there was no concept of security. Right? So by default, Hadoop was not designed to be secure and security was implemented at much later stage so what does it mean let let's say if i'm running a service on a node whether it's a data node daemon or a name node daemon that particular daemon can access any of the data blocks let's say i have a data node one and it has a data node daemon running on it that data node daemon can read any hdfs block without any authentication so that is kind of not our secure environment by default 
So there are two important concepts whenever we talk about security, user security especially. First is the authentication and second is authorization. So authentication means it verifies you are or you are verifying whom you are. Right. Let's say I am a user Aman. I will very verify that whether I am user Aman or not by let's say typing a password or maybe a, some challenge response from the system where it says okay whether you are the user whom you claim to be. So how you can say that whether you are you are the same user by supplying a password or some response to some challenge question asked by the service or the system. The second part is authorization. Okay, once I have logged in or authenticated to the system, what all things I am allowed to do? Can I access particular file? Can I move go to a directory? Can I delete a file or can I create a file in this particular directory or can I access particular service? Right. So that is authorization. So what is the problem actually it is causing? What what problems we can run into if we don't care about authentication in our system or an authorization in our system. So let's say I am a non privileged user in Hadoop. I can impersonate as any user in the cluster and do operations as a super user. For example, let's say you are running your Hadoop cluster and the super user is HDFS or let's say Hadoop user is the super user. So any user whom with which we start the name node service or format the name node service becomes the super user. So who how you can restrict from me being the super user. Let's say on that particular cluster you can do that. But let's say I take my laptop and create a user on that HDFS user and I grant myself sudo. So I change that user and fire a command from that laptop to the cluster as being a super user. I can delete any file. That could be very catastrophic. So obviously there are a lot of checks in place. For example, who which node you can connect from all those things. But there's nothing preventing me if I just rely on let's say a simple firewall I can only block which node you can ex allow access from but you cannot control user level. So if I can access a cluster let's say I'm a user a, a genuine user of a Hadoop cluster who has been given access to it. So I connect to it by using any of my node client node or a laptop or anything. I can change myself to any user I want on my machine because I am the admin on that particular local machine and I can fire a command. So the problem in Hadoop is how it does the verification it just do, does a command id hyphen gn. So what does it mean it just checks for the name. So for example let's say if I'm sitting on a system if I do id it will be telling me the uid but if I do id hyphen gn it will tell me the name of the user I am logged in. So what it does is by default whenever a command is fired it forks a subshell and that subshell only executes the command id hyphen gn. So the name node and the masters let's say name node the job tracker the source manager they are aware of the group a user belongs to. Right, so they will just check for that. They will not exactly check whether the UID matches or not. They will only check for the group which they are member of and only the username they have. And, uh, and also that is only done on the master nodes, not on the any of the client nodes. So if we execute uh, any of these uh, command, let's say HDFS group or yarn rm admin hyphen get groups. So you can see what all groups are visible to your Hadoop system. So if I'm a member of that group, I can do anything. I can do any kind of operations. So I can be member of any group on my own system. 
nobody is stopping me from doing that but when the kerberos is enabled checks are in place on each node for example when i'm saying i'm a user let's say stfs so that stfs user will be coming from a centralized server and that centralized server will be let's say a user management system let's say an ldap and it will be authenticating to a kerberos it will be giving you an authentication ticket saying okay this ticket is valid for hadoop user and that hadoop user or stfs user and that user will be common across your environment so it will kind of an act as a middleman kerberos will act as a middleman so let's look at what exactly kerberos is right with that in mind that why we need security first of all the name kerberos came from a greek uh, mythological character which was a three headed dog which was guarding the fort so because of the three heads kerberos implements three features three components it mainly it has so but before that going to the components so kerberos is you can say simply an authentication protocol it can authenticate the users the service the host using a secret key cryptography methods so it provides a protocol for authentication and it gives you a ticket to authenticate and avoids storing passwords locally or sending them over the network for example the main thing of kerberos is the password is never sent across the wire and it is also never stored locally on any of the client machine only there will be one centralized server which you have to safeguard all your password everything will be there and all the clients when they connect they will not be having any password stored locally or they will not even be sending on wire so how did it works we will talk about that the mechanism but let's understand very simply what kerberos is in a layman's term so let me tell you a very brief or a very simple story so let's say i plan to watch a movie and i book a ticket online by paying through let's say a credit card or a debit card and uh, the site where i where i bought ticket from it says that whenever you go to a counter you take your identity with you or let's say the debit card using which you have made the payment right so let's say next day i arrive at the movie theater i show my identity and i get a ticket i take that ticket and using that ticket i go to watch a movie which movie i can watch i can watch only the movie for which i have got a ticket so when i will go to the entrance of let's let's say it's a multiplex so, so there can be many movies running or many entrances in the theater but when i take my ticket there will be a ticket checker who will be checking you have the ticket but is this ticket for the same movie it will check that if it is not it will not allow me or let's say i take a ticket or let's say what somehow i'm not able to watch the movie let's say i drop the ticket or the ticket uh, or some emergency came i'm not able to watch that so what i can do is i can go back to the ticket counter and say oh i am not able to watch the movie now can you give me a movie a ticket for another show or can i exchange it i make a request so that ticket guy says to me yes i can do you can watch the same movie the next show or the third show on the same day so he sets a limit for me that you can use this ticket i will give you a renew your ticket but you can use this ticket only to watch the movies 
till the end of the day you cannot use it tomorrow right so let's put up this thing into Kerberos so the first thing is when I'm showing my identity it is going to a component in Kerberos which will authorize me which will check me whether actually who I am so Kerberos has a central server which we called it as KDC KDC stands for key distribution center right KDC KDC will have a database where it will be storing all the information let's say the username the password the principles the tickets everything will it's storing that and other is the AS which is the authentication server and there will be an another component which will be ticket granting service so the first thing what what happens is what I do is client contacts the AS similar to how I was explaining you take show your ID card it gives you a ticket using that ticket I go to watch a movie I go to a service right this app server is the service I take that ticket and that ticket I go to the ad take it to the app server and to uh, relating it to say I want to watch a movie and that ticket can be renewed maximum for a limited period of time let's say a 10 hours or a 24 hours 14 hours right uh, it's all configurable but by default it is 14 hours so let's come to the technicalities rather than uh, the story now so the first thing what it does let's say I'm a client I sit on a Linux machine I enter my username hit enter at that moment what it does it goes and contacts the KDC and inside that KDC there's a special component called authentication server it contacts authentication server authentication server what it will do it will send a token back containing information like TGT ticket granting ticket timestamp the validity of that ticket and that will be encapsulated or you can say that will be encrypted inside the password of the user so what AS will be saying I will give you a ticket if you can decrypt it so the client say I want a ticket TGT right not TGS TGS is a service AS will give a TGT let me show you it will be in the diagram how it will be so when I'm sending an AS request when I get an AS request it will be having two important parts sent to me one will be the client name let's say the host where I'm trying from a session key the lifetime and expiry right and a client secret other will be TGT session key the token information and the lifetime and the expiry this is a KDC secret so when I get back the message I will be getting two messages right every for each interaction there will be two messages each message is one that you can decrypt and one you cannot right so each interaction it will be sending me two messages client secret with with one with client secret other with with KDC secret so KDC secret one I can never decrypt I can only decrypt the client secret one with my own password so what is happening here is when I'm asking for a ticket it will encapsulate within the password of the user and that ticket comes back and then I enter my password and if the password matches I can look inside that ticket and I will get I can see a TGT ticket granting ticket I will take that TGT I will go to TGS service saying I have the TGT with me give me a session key 
or a service ticket so it will give me a session key and a, uh, and a service key using that i will jump to app servers to access the service password is never sent me right because here also client is never entering a password which password which is going across the network neither that password is stored locally it is just on the command prompt when i say username hit enter at the back end as is contacted as sent back a tgt encapsulated with a password that password is entered by the user locally if it matches it, it can see the tgt tgt is taken to the tgs tgs will give it a service token service that service token again will be encrypted with a with a special key of the uh, of of the uh, kdc right i will take that and i will go to app server so th again that is encrypted to make sure i do not modify the service ticket in any way what i can do is i cannot modify or look into those encrypted sections which has been encrypted by kdc secret but i can take them and show to the other service and it will say okay you are allowed so this is the important thing to keep in mind each of my request will return me two messages one message which i can decrypt one message which i cannot decrypt the service or the machine you are requesting access to never communicates directly with the kdc for example let's say what kerberos is mainly used for kind of a single sign off mechanism in your organization you might have seen that you log in once into a system let's say or a browser and any site you go to you are never asked for a password again so that service might be another web server or some ssh server or some database any service you access you will never be prompted for a password again so that password is being passed on or the token which you have been assigned it will be transmitted or forwarded to each of the service whichever you access so that you don't have to enter that password and only that tick token is looked into to give you an access and that particular service never talks to the kdc so what does it mean let's say i am a client i want to access let's say a web server this app service is a web server this web server will not be talking to kdc but what will happen is i will have a token for this created inside the kdc right we'll come to that what talk, token i am talking about so it is actually called a principles but i am not using the name now we will see it little bit later so a token will be created inside kdc in advance so whenever i want to request access to that i will be asking for that token once i get that token i will take that token and access the app server but app server is never talking to kdc the kdc stores all of the secret key for the user machine and services in a database so what does it mean the user credentials or the credentials are actually called principal in kerberos terms here let's say in a, on a linux or a windows machine or outside of the kerberos environment we called it as a combination of a username and a password so that thing is referred as a principal principal is mainly authentication token or authentication identity which is given to you in the world of kerberos so i can have a user principal i can have a service principal or i can have a host principal means i can have password for a user i can have a for a service or for a host and the kdc itself because kdc is a very critical component it has its own database so this database itself will be encrypted with a kdc password we have to safeguard that password if that password is gone your data is gone and your entire access will be gone so the kdc itself is encrypted with a master key to add a layer of difficulty to prevent people from stealing the passwords 
So, in a, by default, Kerberos is using symmetric key encryption, but you can change that. These are pluggable. You can use another public key uh, cryptography instead of the symmetric key, key encryptions. So let me show you what actually means on a system so it will be more clear. The KDC which I'm talking about, uh, it supports multiple types of encryptions. For example, as I said, for each interaction, two messages are sent. So each of the messages can have different kind of encryptions. So currently the supported encryptions are, for example, DES3, which can be uh, various encryption levels, or I can use, for example, AES 128-bit, uh, AES 256-bit, uh, HVAC, right? different kind of uh, encryption passwords or encryption uh, types are supported. I can use uh, DES, uh, CBC, CRCs, all those kind of things, but they are very weak and mostly dep deprecated. Now let's look at what are the important things which we need to take care, care of before we actually start with uh, configuring Kerberos. First thing is NTP. Although it's not mandatory, but uh, there should be some mechanism of keeping the time in sync on all the nodes. So, so by default, uh, if any node in the cluster or let's say uh, in your environment is having a time skew of greater than five minutes, the Kerberos authentication will fail. Thinking that uh, what the KDC will think is that this key has been compromised in some way. So it will not let you authenticate so ntp is a service a timekeeping service which uh, must be run in your environment another is dns resolution both the forward and the reverse lookup should work and the packages what we need will be krb5 libs uh, and krb5 server and krb5 workstation if you are using centos by default you will have workstation and your libraries packages installed but if they are not there, you we need to install that. So there are some important files uh, which we'll be touching upon, which will be needed for you to configure Kerberos. For example, uh, your kdc.conf file. This is the main config file which will be uh, talking about, uh, let's say, what all encryptions are supported, what is the realm it is responsible for. Realm means the domain. Right. In simple terms, you can think of Realm as a logical boundary uh, of uh, a domain where which binds all the entities together. And another will be your kadmin uh, 5.acl. Uh, there is a kadmin tool uh, which by using which we will be controlling uh, the uh, all the users within a KDC. So when I say KDC, I'm using a very generic term KDC, but actually KDC has multiple components as we have seen in the previous slides. Like it will have an authentication server, it will have a ticket granting server, it will have a database. And to access that database, we have a service kadmin, which will be providing us an interface using which I can connect to that and create user accounts, host account or service accounts. So it will be more clear uh, once we do the demo. So these uh, slide I have included to give you an idea what are the important components which are demons which will be playing a role in the authentication. For example, PAM underscore KRB5 is an authentication module which will be needed by the clients to connect uh, to a Kerberos environment or do authentication. So let me show you a demo. It will be more clear. So first of all, let me connect to our machine. I'm using a node called master1.cluster.com. You can use any node you want as long as it resolves. Results, there's a 
host name resolution forward and reverse lookup so let me just correct my dns here because i did some modification let me connect to my cluster my dns server and let me just modify this i will remove the another entry from here and i will restart the service right so now it should be fine it should be returning me just one ip and i'm doing reverse lookup as well on this so it is all set so first thing we need to do is i will do a installation of I'm setting this as a Kerberos server, KRB-5 server. So here I'm assuming that you have a repo setup and you have some fundamental understanding of Linux, how the package management works and how we install packages, right? So I've set up a repo. I'm doing KRB-5 hyphen server package installation. I'm doing KRB-5 hyphen libs package installation. It will be there, but still I'm giving it so that in case if this package is not there, it will be installed krb5 hyphen workstation right i do yes so it will not prompt me for confirmation it will just install all these packages so let's wait for packages to get installed you can see it's installing server workstation resolving dependencies and the packages are installed So the very first thing now look, to look for is, let's configure the very first file, which is krb5.conf. So this is the file which we'll be talking about where the logging happens, what will be your default realm, which for which authentication uh, we'll be doing. So let's say, my domain is cluster1.com. So I'm using the same domain as my host name domain has. Right, so it has nothing to do with resolution. It has, I'm not using DNS for Kerberos resolution. Right, I'm using DNS for host resolution so that it can resolve the KDC server and the clients. Right, so there's a different concept. So today is our very first session. So I can have a DNS resolution for Kerberos. Means I will make the Kerberos entries in the DNS and it will actually look for this particular domain validation from a DNS, but currently it is not. So it not, does not necessarily name, name, uh, have to be same as my DNS domain name. It can be different. This is talking about the lifetime of the ticket, which I will get and how far I can renew it and let's update the realms. I can have multiple realms. So here default realm is the one which it will be connecting to or preferring it, but I can have multiple realms defined here. So let's clear here, clear this one. And I give cluster1.com. I will give the KDC server, which will be acting as my KDC server and other authentication server. I can keep them separate as well. Means I can keep my user management or the DB separate from my KDC or I can keep it on the same node. So in our case, I'm keeping everything on the same node. I'm replacing example.com with cluster one.com i could have done this replacement by just doing a string match and replacing or but i'm just writing it because we don't have to make much changes cluster one.com and i'm also writing in small case make sure we don't do typos here otherwise it gets very difficult to troubleshoot in the end okay let's see cluster here also I have done a typo. So I'm saying dot cluster means subdomains as well to cluster.one.com and the other one. Save the file. Another important file which I will be modifying is where Kerberos kdc.conf. Here I will be modifying by default port 88. 
if I want to modify I can but it's good enough we'll leave 88 I'll be giving my domain which will be uh, managed by my KDC I'm saying what will be the encryption it will be using here we can see AES which is advanced encryption standard 256 bit 128 bit right these are kind of the standard now we don't use CRC and all those are very weak uh, encryption algorithms so I will be saying which will be the default realm ACL file ACL file will be the file which will be declaring uh, who all and from which host you can connect to the admin database means to do addition of uh, users or host principles those kind of things right so it will be more clear when we do a uh, when we complete with the demo what actually we are referring to and there will be a kd5 key tab file key tab file means uh, there is one password for your kdc and there is also one key tab which will be used by your k admin service to talk to the kdc right so i'm talking about the k uh, a key tab file so for example let's say i'm a user aman i can keep a very simple password for myself which i can remember but for hosts or service communication we can ask them to generate some random password and we will store those into key tabs and those key tabs will be used <clears throat> uh, as a challenge response kind of a thing symmetric key whenever service asks for uh, that password so we have done that change the next change we need to do is uh, we need to do uh, the k admin acl so i will change the domain here as well so i'm saying which all domains it can join from my k admin which what is k admin we'll see that <clears throat> so now what i will do is i will create my realm actually i will initialize my realm so the command for for that will be kt utils uh, sorry the kt util will come to a little bit later first let's create or initialize the database kdb five utils hyphen or create hyphen r cluster one dot com all should be caps hyphen s so r is specifying the realm s is creating a stash file means i will create creating a password file i hit enter so you can see <coughs> it is waiting for entropy of the system to be generated so entropy is whenever uh, we are going for let's say encryption ssh key or any kind of key gens it looks for entropy on the system to have a very good encryption asking me to do some activity on the node so that it can generate randomness so what I can do I can go to the terminal of this I can play around I can do some cat of files write some file or place with some mouse cursor or better ways I can start a service on this node I can do a yum install random number generator tools right this is a tool I do install here or oh, this tool is already there if this tool is not we can install it and then I will start this service how I start this service I can either start the daemon by using etc init.d random number generator start or what I can do is I can do random number generator hyphen r I'm giving a device a non-blocking random number device so it will use that and do a random number generation at the back end in my system and increase entropy so now you can see the moment I hit enter here how quickly it has given me the response because the entropy for my system has increased right altogether this is a different topic maybe maybe when we do our future sessions we can dig more into the entropy so i will give a password 
Now this password is very important. Do not forget it because this is your master password for your KDC. And this is very important to keep track of. So now once this is done, I will start my KDC. Let's say I try to start my K-admin. Right? But K-admin, before starting K-admin, I have to do one more thing. I will go to k-admin dot local. Local means I'm connecting from the node where the KDC is running or where the k-admin is sitting. I can do question mark to look at the commands, but currently I'm doing it list prints. So I will say add prints root slash admin. I'm adding a root user for my k admin tool so that using that I can connect from other nodes as well and add users, add principles, whatever I want. So principle, when I'm saying principle, it's basically a username and a password. Either it could be for a user, it could be for a host, it could be for a service. Then what I will need to do is I need to add these two k admin admin to my uh, cluster uh, to my key tab. So what will be the command key tab add hyphen k slash where Kerberos and I will give the path I will say k admin key tab and I will give k admin slash admin and I will give k admin slash change pw. So I'm adding to that to the key tab so that this key tab can do a challenge response by using the key tab file. Now I will do add a user, any user. Let's say add prints. I'm using my adding myself, Aman. Adding a password for myself. Remember the password, whatever you have entered. And I'm doing an exit out of it. Or let's say this add prints which I've done, currently I've done it for a user. I can do it for a host. I'm saying generate a random number. I'm entering a principle for my KDC host. Cluster1.com. I can add for any other node in the cluster. Let's say D1, DN1, or dn2 whatever nodes I have I can add for that quit I go to another node in my cluster hostname dn2 let me check whether it is also not it's fine so first thing I will be doing here is either I can create the file manually vi etc krp5 I can create the file manually first of all I have to install some packages here yum install krb5 hyphen workstation I will be installing lips. It's already there. I will one more package I will be installing is pam underscore krb5. Okay, that package is already there. 
so most packages are in place we don't need to worry about that so now I will do auth config hyphen tui to make things easy I could have copied the file etc krb5 from the master and put it there or I am using the tool auth config to just to show you that I have another option okay it's saying pam dot l tap uh, file was not found we will install that package as well but let's first off set up that okay okay we are not using LDAP, we are using Kerberos so it's asking me what realm I say cluster one dot com cap caps then it is asking me KDC I'm saying master one dot cluster one dot com again it is asking me where is my admin server admin server means where I'm creating my users and all next so now you will see it will automatically create a file for me with the entries in it now I will do k admin hyphen p root hyphen admin remember this we set up on the master by using k admin local so if I'm sitting on the node where my k admin is running I can simply do k admin dot local but if I'm trying to connect from any other node I have to give hyphen p root admin and the password for it so now I do list prints here I can see all those things for which I created there let's say a host key I can add this host key to my this host like this so if I don't give my key tab path by default it will create a key tab at the path etc krb 5 dot key tab or I can give it like for example krb 5 dot key tab if I don't give that part by default it will create there only oh sorry I've done a typo here it should be key tab quit rm etc krb5 I will be del deleting the wrong one we don't need this we need krb tab so now what goes inside this key tab file so as I said as a user has a password I can have a password for my service I can have a password for my host so let's load this look into this what what actually goes into this KT util, utils question mark read KT I will give the path etc krb5 key tab and I do list so it is listing me so depending upon the type of encryption I have supported encryptions I will be given the slots there are a lot of details here probably we will look in some future sessions so it is giving me slots where it is giving me a key for each with different encryptions so whenever this host talks to the uh, DN2 host will talk to my KDC it will be sending this key tab it will be using this key tab for doing a challenge response means symmetric key encryption so I will be quitting here so let's create a user here user add aman I change as user aman so I do klist I have no credentials but I, when I do k in it here and I enter the password I will be getting a ticket I've got a service ticket so once I got a service ticket I can connect to any node in the cluster which is Kerberized means which Kerberos is aware of okay it is prompting me for password okay let me check what is the time here what is the time here
46 okay okay let me see what is the token we got okay so what we have to do here is let's exit out of it let's add one more thing list prints kt add I'm adding this and I'm adding DN2 as well. I'm not sure last time I added that or not. DN2 and I'm quitting. And now we will try to connect to the other node. So now let's say I'm on this node whose name is dn2 i'm changing as user aman i do a k destroy to destroy any key i do a k in it it prompts me for password i do k list i get a ticket and i can do ssh so what is what it is doing is it is taking my that token which i have got from kerberos and using that to authenticate to the another service so at the back end what it is actually doing is let me explain you this here so I have a KDC which is a part of uh, main service KDC has components like AS AS and it has TGT TGS actually ticket granting service and let's say I have an another server which is my master one and I have a server called DN2 let's say so I want to connect SSH to this node from DN to master so actually master is itself is running KDC in my case but I'm doing an SSH so first thing is I enter my username and password to connect to KDC so the message which I sent I sent a request actually I sent a request to KDC which will actually go to AS right this component AS and that request will be encapsulated or encrypted by my password and KDC already knows that password how it knows the password if we see here the KDC already has a database with itself if I do kadmin dot local and if you do list prints here you can see we have added that here so that password is known to the other side means KDC already knows that so it takes takes that message which is a request which is it has been sent encapsulated inside uh, the password of user Aman so it already has that so it is able to decrypt that so if it is able to decrypt that it knows that it has come from a genuine user validated user because that user has entered that same password that's why I am able to de decrypt because I have the same in my database so once it does, does, does that it returns two things actually it returns session key and a TGT so session key is the one which will uh, uh, actually contain a lot of information like host name timestamp the validity and same will be for tgt as well so this will be it, it is returning actually two parts one is the session key one is the tgt tgt is something which it cannot decrypt and it doesn't even need to decrypt the session key is the one which will be allowing the dn2 means aman user on dn2 to connect to tgs and this will be again encrypted 
inside the password of the user Aman. So when it goes here, Aman enters its password and is able to decrypt and it will see the TGT. Once it gets the TGT, the password which was there for Aman user will be removed from the memory. It is only sitting in the memory. It is never written to disk anywhere. So there is a called Kerberos tray. So it will be in Kerberos tray and the moment this user gets a TGT, which is a ticket granting ticket, that password is destroyed. So it will take that TGT along with the session key and go to TGS. So TGS know that, oh, oh, okay, it has called a TGT. So it must be a valid thing. So it will give it a response as back sending a valid token to it with which will be encrypted inside this service password of this in case I am talking about SSH it will be encrypted within the depending upon what I am trying to access I may be accessing a web server which might be HTTP so it will be encrypted inside uh, with that password service password or it might be uh, encrypted inside the host uh, key password so it will be encrypted inside that and I will be getting a token so this token will be taken by this user and try to SSS to this node. And when it reaches that uh, node, so already only this node knows its password, right? For the host one. And it will use that uh, key tab to decrypt that password and look inside the request. And it will see that, okay, this request is coming from this host. It is asking me for this validity of this token. So it will allow it to connect there. So in our case, what is happening is, I connect to DN2 as user Aman. When I connect to that user, if I do K list, I do not have any ticket with me. So I do K in it to get a ticket. It con con contacts the KDC and does this process at the back end. And it prompts me for a password. I enter the password. I will get a ticket. So if you look here, if I exit from here, uh, if I do K list, I will be getting a ticket. So once I get this ticket, using that ticket, I can jump to any node in the cluster. I can jump to master. Maybe let's say if there was another node called DE1, I can jump to that. But Let's say I jump from DN2 to node master one. I cannot jump back. I cannot jump ahead to any other node unless I do GSS delegation, token delegation. So there's a concept of delegation means the token which I have got here I'm carrying that token with myself, the node which I go to. I go to this node. If I do K list here, it is gone. But I can carry this token with me. There's a concept called GCC, GSS, API delegation. So I will be carrying that token with me to the another node. So when I reach that node, I can again SSH there. So it kind of give me a single sign on. So all these concepts probably we will be seeing in our upcoming sessions. So this is the main very basic idea of Kerberos. So I should be able to SSH without being prompted for password. So if you have any further questions on this, you can reach out to me at my email ID. And this is a GitHub which you can use uh, for any of the recipes. And feel free to ask any sort of questions you have. I will be more than ha happy to help you out. So this is a very, very basic introductory uh, sessions on a uh, session on Kerberos. I can set multiple ways. I can keep the keys inside LDAP. And when we go to Hadoop, uh, this configuration gets a bit complex because we'll be generating tickets or uh, the principles for each of the daemon. Right, separately and there's a concept of where that key tab file goes in each config file how the daemon uses it right all those things so we'll be doing that in our upcoming sessions so for that the assumption is you will be very well versed with hadoop so you should not be uh, wondering or asking okay what is hadoop what is name node why we put in that config file so the assumption there will be that you know hadoop 
and we will be taking this Kerberos session and building up key, uh, key tabs and putting into the Hadoop config files. So thanks very much for your time. Probably we will sync up uh, in our session two, which I will update soon. And if you have any queries, reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice week ahead. Bye-bye.